Hello and welcome to my presentation of the paper Your Best Guess When You Know Nothing – Identification and Mitigation of Selection Bias. The paper was written by me, Katharina Dost, and my colleagues from the University of Auckland, Katharina Tashkova, Patricia Riddle and Jörg Wicker. During this talk I will answer a few questions that you probably have in mind right now, the first one being why should I care about this topic? Once I could answer that, you might also be interested to know what we did and if it works. So let's start with the first one. It is spring here in New Zealand, so let us assume that somebody wants to keep track of which flowers are already in bloom. Therefore, he writes down every flower he finds together with its location, and that results in the data set we see here. Orange, green, and blue are different flower types, and the positions of the points reflect the flower locations. If we train a classifier based on that data set, we get the decision boundary that is displayed here in black. But maybe there was a restricted area that the researcher couldn't access and hence the measurements in this area are missing. That's here displayed as the hole in the middle. If we train a classifier based on that biased subset, we would get the red decision boundary, so it clearly is a biased model. So what went wrong here? Well, the typical assumption in machine learning is that training and test set are independently drawn from the same distribution. We refer to that distribution as the ground truth. And that's the foundation for our typical model training process, as the training set is representative for the ground truth, so if we learn something on the training set, it transfers to unseen test sets that are drawn from the same ground truth. Unless it overfits, but that's a different story, we don't want to address that here. Unfortunately, that doesn't hold here, because we have a biased subset. So, as you can see, biases happen just like that, but I'm sure that each of you has seen plenty of other cases of bias. In general, we talk about bias if the collected data does not represent the entire population. But the good news is, in many cases, there are solutions. If some ground truth information is available, for example, an unlabeled sample or the underlying distribution, then we can consider the literature on selection bias reweighting approaches or covariate shift correction. If the researcher suspects at least a concrete bias or has a concrete task at hand, he can validate using the AI Fairness 360 toolkit or use additional data from different sources. But if he assumes that everything is fine, he will just use the data as is and train a biased model. And this is where our research kicks in. So let's talk about the precise problem and the solution we propose. Assuming there is a data set D, which we consider to be representative for the ground truth, but only a subset, a biased subset B is available, we aim to reconstruct the missing part, i, or at least approximate it as good as possible by i hat. In the flower example, this would be our ground truth dataset D, and this the biased subset, and then we aim to fill in the hole. So our overall goal is to identify the biased zones and generate data there to reconstruct the original decision boundary. The most important assumption we make is that no ground truth information is available. Additionally, we assume just in this paper that there is only one cluster per class and this cluster has to be normally distributed. The first one can be solved by pre-clustering the dataset, but the latter is a true restriction that needs to be addressed in future research. But it's a good starting point, because based on the central limit theorem, we know that normal distributions are the most common distributions, which is why in this paper we propose the algorithm imitate that stands for identify and mitigate selection bias, but also points out what it does. It tries to imitate the ground truth dataset by generating points in order to have the density of the dataset resemble a Gaussian. For example, in the flower measurement dataset, we can express the density of the orange flowers as histograms over both axes. And if we want the histograms to match Gaussians, it becomes obvious where points need to be generated. That is, on the x-axis we see that there is some part missing on the right side and for the y-axis we see that the histogram is just too flat, so there needs to be some refilling in the middle. Let's talk about imitate in more detail. So we assume there is a ground truth dataset D, which we would like to reconstruct, but only a biased subset B is available. We feed that and only that class-wise and imitate. The first step is then to transform the data using outlier removal and independent component analysis into a different space in which the least Gaussian components are the axes, such that it becomes more obvious where we need to generate data. We then draw histograms or kernel density estimators depending on the dataset size 
over each of the axes that you can see here in green and then fit a Gaussian, that's the orange line, for each dimension. The area between the data and the fitted Gaussian is shown in yellow here and it indicates where we need to generate data. That we do in the next step, so based on the yellow areas we've seen from the histograms, we generate points coordinate-wise. That's possible because ICA returns independent components, but it only models convex shapes. The points we generated are the yellow ones. As a last step, Imitate estimates its confidence in the generated points based on how densely they were generated and already removes all the points that are not in a dense area, which is why our result is less fuzzy than the original data set. Um, and then it transforms it back to the original data space. So we've seen the result looked like the ground truth data set D, but does it really work? Well, to answer that question, we carried out experiments on real-world datasets, where we induced in synthetic bias by splitting the dataset into B and I hat based on one of its attributes. As a test set, we held out a subset of the original dataset, and then we measured if Imitate's generation of data points helps to reconstruct the original accuracy. The star here denotes a significant improvement. As we can see, Imitate improves the accuracy on all datasets except for the car dataset. That is because the car dataset has discrete features. We will address that in future research. Our approach is not all about restoring the original accuracy, but also about identification of biased areas. Therefore, I would like to show you Kegel's cardiovascular disease dataset, which we have limited to the age and weight features that you can see here on the axis. And each data point then reflects one patient and it is labeled and colored based on if the patient is healthy, green or sick, which we have in blue. Application of Imitate yields the results on the right. Faded out are the original data points. The points with yellow lines are what Imitate generated. And we can see that Imitate identifies that there should be more patients over 65 years old with cardiovascular disease. And since the study makes a sharp cut there and didn't include any older patients, we see that that is a reasonable result. But it also identifies a bias towards underweight patients. And of course, there won't be patients with 25 kilo weight, but it mirrors a trend towards overweight in the dataset, which could reflect a trend in the population. But it might also be due to the fact that being overweight increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, which is why overweight people are more likely to go for a corresponding examination and therefore produce a biased model. So we've seen that Imitate yields interpretable results, but only on simple data sets. And future research directions would be the extension to arbitrary distributions, but also several clusters per class and user-defined hard boundaries. That is important, for example, in the case of the flower measurement dataset that we discussed. If there are measurements missing in the middle because it was a restricted military area and the researcher couldn't access it, then the reconstruction makes perfectly sense. But if there are no measurements because it was, for example, a lake, then we don't want to reconstruct flowers there. And the user should get the possibility to set boundaries here and decide which case he wants to have. So I promised at the beginning to answer several questions, so let's see if I could answer them. The first one being, why should you care? Well, biases happen and they result in biased models. If the researcher is not aware of that bias, she will be working with an invalid model. What did we do? We are aiming to find a technique to identify and mitigate selection bias when no ground truth information is available. Therefore, we investigate the dataset's probability density and generate points in order to smooth out the density. And does it work? Yes, on simple datasets. In future research, we will extend the method to more general datasets. You can find the implementation as well as experimental results and way more details than I could give here on GitHub under the link github.com slash slash imitate. Thank you for watching my talk. I'm looking forward to your questions and comments during the live session, but for now, have a good day.